Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're going to take apart a CRT TV, see what's inside, and get some parts for free that we can use in future projects. Viewer be warned, CRT TVs have some dangerous parts and components. You need to know what you're getting into before you start dismantling anything. Make sure you use good safety precautions, especially when working with anything electronic. I will be covering some general safety precautions when we go through this project, but I don't have time to get through them all. So please do know what you're doing first. We're going to start digging into this by taking off the back of the cover. There's a bunch of screws to get out, and that's where we begin. I have Justin helping me out with this project, and it's always good to have someone handy when you're working in the first steps of an electronic project like this, especially until you make sure that all the capacitors and other components have been successfully discharged of all residual electricity. The back cover actually comes off quite easily, but the rest of it's going to take a little more work. We're going to set this up right so we can get a good look at the flyback transformer right here. This is the first piece that you need to be very cautious about because this does hold a residual charge. The good news is this TV has been unplugged for a long time. Either way, we actually did a quick double check on this first before we filmed it, but I'm going to walk you through briefly how I get to that part in just a minute for safety's sake. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start disconnecting everything else that's still connecting this tube to the remainder of the cover that's here at this point. You can feel free to go ahead and cut away some of the wires, but the one you want to avoid cutting at all cost is the one connecting the flyback transformer because this is going to be very useful in future projects. However, this other one around the outside has great thick gauge copper inside of it, so I'm more careful about removing that because I want to use that copper wiring in the future as well. Despite my confidence in knowing that there's not much of anything left in this that can have a charge residual, I am still very careful about what I touch, and I would recommend that you do the same. At this point, we're going to actually go through the process for how you would discharge the residual charge inside a flyback transformer. I highly recommend that you do your own research and decide what you feel you're the most comfortable with in terms of safety, but this is the approach that I take. I make sure that I have an alligator clip grounded that I use to ground my screwdriver, which I then put one hand behind my back while I slide the screwdriver underneath this little suction cup until it makes contact with the two pins inside. Once successfully discharged, I can feel comfortable about going back and using both hands to get this flyback transformer connection disconnected. Some good gentle prying will get the suction cup and wires removed from the back of the tube. Next, I'm removing the screws from the clamps that hold the collar in place. I then move on to disconnecting any residual wires that are holding this circuit board in place. The ultimate goal is to free up all connections that are holding this tube into the case so that I can get the tube out of here and continue to work on the remainder of the parts. Once done, I'm going to go ahead and slide this circuit board off the top of the electron gun. If it's a little bit sticky, you can actually rock it back and forth until you free it up, and it will slide right off. Then you can remove the tube and set it out of the way. That's a good idea anyway because it's made of leaded glass and it's full of phosphors. You don't want that to break and start inhaling any of that stuff. It's dangerous. Once I got the main circuit board out of the way, I moved on to the speaker. You got to unscrew it from the backside, but then on the front, you've got this faceplate that holds it in place. Once that's popped out, you've got a pretty good sized speaker that you can use in another project as well. As we're all finished up here, I've got some good salvaged parts that I can use in future projects. Right here you see the flyback transformer and a lot of other pieces. I do go ahead and then take the main circuit board so that I can then get my soldering iron out and take out anything else that I want to use in something else. But that takes a little bit of time and it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. So you just have to trust me, there's a lot of good stuff here. But if you don't want to trust me wholeheartedly, you can go ahead and look in the description below because I did put a list there of the main things that I took out that I want to keep and use again somewhere else. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.